I'm Linda Hartling. I'm the Director of Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies. In our not-so-hierarchical organization, Director primarily means that I work in direct collaboration with whatever needs to be done, but particularly in collaboration with our beloved founding president, Evelyn Lindner, and all of you who have made this program possible. So welcome, everyone. We have a great program planned. We'd like to offer this video as a mini introduction to the work of Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies with a little bit about our World Dignity University initiative. But most important of all, is to, we'd like it to be an introduction to how we go about beginning a conversation on the difficult dynamics of humiliation. We want you to note that our programs are not one-time events but we're part of a lifelong conversation designed to go far beyond this particular gathering. And that's because we know there will never be enough time to say all that needs to be said or do all that needs to be done. We hope that you will walk away with at least one important idea or one new connection that will support your valuable work in the world. So welcome everyone. What is Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies? Well, we are a global transdisciplinary community of concerned scholars, researchers, activists, practitioners, creative artists from all walks of life, from all backgrounds. We wish to, to stimulate systemic change globally and locally to open up space for dignity, for mutual respect, and esteem to take root and grow. We strive to transform humiliation into positive action that dignifies the lives of all people and replenishes the planet. So welcome to what we like to call is our Digna community. We have friends throughout the world and we especially wanna welcome our new friends here and our returning friends. Thank you for being with us. Some of you are at the height of your professional and scholarly achievements, and others of you are beginning your path as learners and explorers. But we know each of you has something important to contribute, and we are all equal in our struggle for dignity. Welcome, everyone. So how do we go about beginning a conversation on the difficult dynamics of humiliation? Well, at one of our very first meetings, Don Klein, who wrote some groundbreaking papers on the dynamics of humiliation, he urged us to take a unique approach, to come into this work studying humiliation from what we've come to call a frame of appreciative inquiry. This is actually a research methodology that was developed by Case Western Reserve University, but we have adopted and adapted it to fit our community and to include the voices of people around the world. It really comes down to coming into this work with a sense of curiosity, a sense of openness, a sense of awe and wonder, the same type of awe and wonder you would experience if you saw a beautiful sunset or this amazing tree on this slide. But Dawn would remind us that an appreciative inquiry is not about happy talk or just being nice. It's about focusing on how we can cultivate a mutually dignifying learning community where everyone can bring their best ideas to the table. Because we need those ideas to survive the crises we're seeing develop in the world today. So what does the appreciative approach look like in practice? Well, for our group, it starts with putting relationships first. And that begins with listening each other into voice. Speaking is a two-way process in reality. We can help people share their ideas. As Carmen Hedaraka, a Maori oral historian that we met in New Zealand says, Speaking's great, but listening's even better. That's why we moved away from the traditional lecture presentation format and moved in the direction of conversation. Relationships come first, and we try to listen each other into voice. We take to heart His Royal Highness Prince El Hassan bin Talal's words when he says, the time has come 
for a redefining of the conduct of our relations, of our relations with one another and all of our relations on our planet. But what kind of relationships are we looking for? Well, my mentor, Jean Baker Miller, the psychiatrist, emphasizes relationships that move toward mutuality. What are the characteristics of those relationships? Well, Jean talked about the five good things of growth fostering relationships, relationships where all people can grow and participate. When you're in those types of relationships, you feel a sense of zest or energy in the relationship that leads you to feel mutual empowerment, the empowerment to take action on behalf of yourself and others, that leads to greater clarity and knowledge about yourself, others, and the relationship, that leads to a sense of esteem and sense worth, a sense of worth that leads to a desire for more connection. These are the kinds of energizing relationships that we hope to grow in our community to create virtuous cycles of relating. Because we know that none of us is as smart as all of us. This is one of the key reasons why we moved away from the top-down lecture presentation format and moved in the direction of conversation and collaboration. We strive to incorporate what Emmanuel Dahmani taught us, and that is that spirit of Mbutu, that I am human because of your humanity, that I am because of you. That's why we put relationships first. That's one key idea, but the next key idea is to focus on creating dignifying dialogue. Mike Miller taught us that the academic debate model sometimes changes people's minds, but not very often. Instead, we can engage in dignifying ideas and dignifying dialogue and think about how we can contribute to the conversation, contribute to the discussion rather than subtract from it. We can ask ourselves, what can I say that will help move the conversation forward? That's dignifying dialogue. Dignifying our dialogue also challenges us to use our best skills to disagree without being disagreeable. Disagree with dignity. That's how we strive to unite ourselves in our diversity through dignifying dialogue. So why do we emphasize both putting relationships first and dignifying dialogue? Because we are always working with the elephant in the room the experience of humiliation. We know we will always make mistakes and step on each other's toes, we'll stumble and fall, we'll mispronounce names, but we can apologize and help each other up so we can stumble forward together. As Evelyn writes, we are working with one of the most powerful forces that can disrupt relationships on the earth from the interpersonal to the social to the global scale. As former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan says, all the cruel and brutal things, even genocide, starts with the humiliation of one individual. Evelyn reminds us that we are living in times when nothing short of global cooperation can successfully address the urgent problems we're facing in the world today. That's one of the reasons why we launched the World Dignity University Initiative to put dignity at the core of learning, both globally and locally. We're excited that this initiative is, will be led by David Yamada, a wonderful scholar who's looked at not only workplace bullying, but healthy workplaces in the world workplaces that support the growth of all involved. We know that education is a fundamental human right and essential for the exercise of all other human rights. That's one of the reasons we bring this conversation throughout the world at our meetings to build a mutually dignifying learning community that strengthens the dignity of all people even as we strive to replenish this planet. We join together with so many others, whether they're in this room 
or out in the world, we join together with many others to become the beacons of dignity we wish to see in the world. We hope this video offers you a little introduction to the work of Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies and the World Dignity University Initiative, and in particular, introduces you to our appreciative approach for beginning a conversation on the dynamics of humiliation. There is lots more information about the appreciative approach on our website, so I encourage you to visit the website, and I hope you will walk away with at least one new idea or one important connection that'll help you with your crucial work in the world. Because we know a world without humiliation dignifies us all. Welcome, welcome everyone.